Okay, we are going to go over the Chapter 5 Review for the Test. So let's start with number one. It says, how much work? When you're reading questions, you're looking for those key words. So you're trying to find the work. Is needed to lift a 15 Newton block. Now the 15 Newtons, that describes the block. So that 15 Newtons, that's the weight, F of G. Now remember, F of G is MG. So the weight is already in Newtons, and that's 15 Newtons. And it's lifting it 3 meters vertically. So the displacement is 3 meters. So we know that work is equal to FD. So when we're talking about the vertical work, it's equal to the force of weight times that vertical displacement. So the work is equal to 15 times 3, which would be 45 joules, because a newton times a meter is a joule. Now, where you, they might try and trick you on questions like this is they'll give you the mass in kilograms, and they'll ask you the work. Well, if they give you the mass, then you have to multiply it times the acceleration due to gravity, so F would be mg, so then it would be, the work would be mgd. So you have to look, are they giving me the mass or are they giving me the weight? All right, number two, work is being done when a force, okay, acts vertically on a cart that can only move horizontally. The key to this question is work is only done on the force in the direction which the objects move. So the move, the object so if it if the work if the force is acting vertically and the cart moves horizontally, is there work done? No. Is exerted by one team in a tug of war where there's no movement. If it's not moving, no work is done. Is exerted while pulling a wagon up a hill? Yes. Because even though you're pulling up the hill, there's still a component in that direction which is applying the force. And then of gravitational attraction acts on a person standing on the surface of the earth. So they're not mo If you're standing on the earth, are you moving? No. So remember, the key here is work is only done if an object moves. Work is only done the force in the direction in which the object moves. So when we go over the quiz tomorrow, we're going to see that that's where there was a lot of confusion on the front of the quiz. Oops. He's taking the quiz. <laughs> All right, number three. A net force of five newtons moves a two kilogram object a distance of three meters in three seconds. How much work is done? So the key here is here. Why don't you go over to the other teacher? All right, so number three, a net force of five newtons moves a two kilogram object a distance of three meters in three seconds. How much work is done on the object? So the basic thing is work is equal to FD. Now they give us the force is five newtons. They tell us the mass. They tell it it moves at three meters in three seconds. The thing about this is they give us all this extra information that we don't need. This was another mistake on the quiz because they gave you a horizontal force and then they also gave you the weight and some of you used the wrong force. So if I have a box and it's being pushed horizontally and it moves this displacement, the work is this force times this displacement. How much the box weighs has nothing to do with the problem. And that's where a lot of you made mistakes on the quiz. All right, so the answer here is just 5 times 3, which is 15. So you need to look at that sometimes you're going to get extra information. You need to figure it out. All right, number 4. A horizontal force of 40 newtons pushes a block along a level table at a constant speed of 2 meters per second. How much work is on the block in 6 seconds? Now I know that W 
is equal to FD. Now the force, the problem is do I know how far this block was pushed? I know that the force is equal to 40 newtons. That part I know. Now I don't have D. So I don't have how far it went, but what do I have? They tell me that the velocity is 2 meters per second, and they tell me the time is equal to 6 seconds. And what I know is, way back from Chapter 2, that velocity is equal to displacement over time. Everyone learned in middle school speed is distance over time, okay? So now when we rearrange this, we have x is equal to vt, which is 2 times 6 is 12. So x is 12, so then I put 12 meters up here, and then 40 times 12 is 480. All right, number five. The diagram below shows a five kilogram mass sliding now nine meters down an incline, a height of two meters and three seconds. The object gains 90 joules of kinetic energy. So this problem has to do with work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Okay? So up here at the top, it's not moving, and the total energy here is mgh. So the total energy here at the top, because there's no kinetic, it's not moving, so the total energy at the top, mgh, is equal to 5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times this mg, what's its height? It's this height above the ground, so it's times 2 meters. So the total energy up here is equal to 98 joules. But they say the object gains 90 joules of kinetic energy. So work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. But whatever I lose in kinetic, I gain in potential and vice versa. So up here it's all potential. So I'm losing potential and I'm gaining kinetic. So here... We just have, it says how much work is done against friction. So the work done against friction is what I lose. So the total is 98. At the bottom, it's 90. So what's the difference between 98 and 90? The difference would be 8 joules. Number six, as the time required for a person to run up a flight of stairs increases, the power, this was a question on your lab. Whenever you see a question that's relating to, there's no, you're not substituting any um, numbers, you first thing you do is you write down the equation. So power is work divided by time. So now it says what happens if the time increases. So this number here, this is going to increase. And now it says what happens to the power. So now if this number gets bigger, what's happening to this number? Okay? So if we look at this, these are what? Inversely proportional. So they mean this number is going to stay the same. So if this number increases, this number is going to decrease because this is in the denominator of the fraction. So the answer here is decreases. Number seven, a force of 10 newtons is required to move an object at a constant speed for five meters per second. What's the power? So we know power is work over time. We know power is FD over T. And D over T is also equal to V. So power is F times V. So it's equal to 10 times 50. So the power is also equal to... 
Oh, 5. Whoops. So 10 times 5 would be 50. And that's it. An object is lifted at a constant speed, a distance h above the surface of the Earth in time t. The total potential energy gained by the object is equal to, well, it's not equal to the average force. It's not equal to the weight, because these are both forces. We haven't even learned about momentum. So we know that work is equal to the change in energy. As the pendulum swings, so the answer to that one was C. As the pendulum swings from position A to B, as shown in the diagram above, what is the relationship of the kinetic energy to potential energy? Okay, so here's A. Remember, we always measure energy from base level, which is considered the ground. So when we look at this from A to B, so here, if it's not moving, it's all potential, and the kinetic is zero. At the bottom, it's going to lose potential, and the potential here is going to be zero, and that's where the kinetic energy is going to be a max. So here we have potential energy is a max, kinetic energy is a minimum. As it starts falling, the potential energy is going to decrease, and the kinetic energy is going to increase because the total amount of energy remains the same. So at the bottom, Potential energy is MGH, the height is zero, so the potential energy is going to be a minimum and the kinetic energy is going to be a maximum. So if we read our choices here, we're looking for the one where the kinetic energy is going to increase and the potential energy is going to decrease, which is choice D. Number 10. If the kinetic energy of a 10 kilogram object is 2,000 joules, its velocity is. So the first thing I'm going to write down is I know kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So I want to solve for v, so I'm going to rearrange the equation to solve for the unknown in terms of the known. Because if I just plug numbers in, that's how I make a mistake. So v is equal to the square root of 2ke over m. So that's equal to the square root of... 2 times 2,000 over 10, and that came out to be 20. Now, what's the most common mistake that somebody would make on this problem? They forget to take the square root. And that usually happens because they don't rearrange the equation and they plug numbers. So if people just plugged in, kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So they said the kinetic energy is 2,000 is equal to 1 half 10 times v squared, they forget to take the square root at the end. Is that one of the choices there? Of course it is. So the most common mistake that somebody's going to make is going to be a choice. That's why you should always rearrange the equation to solve for the unknown in terms of the known. All right, number 11. If the velocity of a moving object is doubled, what happens to the kinetic energy? Again, this is on the quiz. A lot of you made a mistake. When you have a problem asking you about an equation, the first thing you do is you don't do it in your head. It's not magic. You write it down. So you write down the equation for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So now it said if the velocity is doubled, what happens to the kinetic energy? So now I'm going to double the velocity. Now remember, this isn't going to change. So that 1 half m is almost like a constant. So instead of v, I'm going to have 2v. But that 2v is squared. So when I square the v, I square the 2. So it becomes 4v squared. So the difference between the original equation and this one is 4, so the kinetic energy is quadrupled. That is the way you do problems like that. They ask you questions like that on every single standardized test. So whether you're taking the subject area test in physics, even if you're going to take in chemistry or anything like that, those are questions they repeatedly ask you. You shouldn't get those wrong. You have to write down the equation. You don't just do some magic in your head and say, hmm, I think this is what is going to happen. 
All right, number 12, it says a 60 kilogram student running at 3 meters per second has a kinetic energy. So again, I'm just substituting in kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, and I substituted my values, and that's it. Now on the test, how long should that take you? I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds tops, including bubbling. Number 13, as a bullet is shot vertically, as a bullet shot vertically upward rises, the kinetic energy of the bullet. So let's draw a picture. You know, stop trying to do stuff in your head. So here's a bullet that's going up, okay? So as the bullet goes up, here the velocity is going to be a maximum, right? So as the bullet starts to go up, the velocity is going to decrease, 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 because remember, gravity is pulling it down. Until the velocity reaches its maximum height, where the velocity is zero. So it says, as the bullet is shot vertically upward, what happens to the kinetic energy? Well, the kinetic energy is going to decrease because kinetic energy is one-half mv squared, and because the velocity is decreasing, the kinetic energy is going to decrease. So if you're not sure, just draw yourself a little visual picture to help you conceptualize what's going on in that situation. Don't just think, hmm, let me think about this in my head, because most of us are visual learners, and if we see it, it helps us to understand it. All right, so we have two questions left. Number 14. Below is a graph representing the elongation of a spring at different forces as different forces are added to it. So elongation is just how much a spring stretches. So it says, what is the spring constant? So the spring constant is F is equal to minus Kx. And we're going to talk about the negative sign later on. But in this chapter, we were concerned with figuring out how to figure out K. So K is equal to F over X. And right now, don't be concerned with the sign and let's just look at what the spring constant is. So the spring constant is going to be, basically, if you look at this graph, we know that the slope of a graph of a straight line is delta y over delta x, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Even though this is physics, we need to know the equation to find the slope of a straight line. So if I look at the delta y, that's elongation in meters divided by the force um, in newtons, but that's not spring constant. Spring constant is what? Newton times a meter, right? So the spring constant is going to be the difference between the force divided by the elongation. So don't, this is the biggest mistake a lot of you are going to make on a graph like this. You're going to look at this and say, oh, I'm going to find the slope of the line. Remember that k is f over x. So you're dividing here. Now we know that this is the same all along. We see it's a constant k, but you're not doing delta y over delta x. Okay, what you're doing here is you're going to look at the force. So the force here is 5, and you can take the two endpoints, minus 0 over um, the elongation, which is 0 0.5 minus 0. So 5 divided by 0.5 is 10. So you see now that newtons per meter is the correct unit for a spring constant. So this would be the mistake because we've done so many graphs in this class that you're going to say, I'm just going to find the slope of this line. So a lot of people would do the reciprocal. Is that a choice? It is a choice. So these are the most common mistakes that people are going to make. All right, the last question is a 20 newton weight is attached to a spring causing it to stretch, as shown in the diagram below. What is the spring constant? So F is equal to Kx. Again, K is equal to F divided by X. Write it out. Don't do it in your head. So the force is the force of weight, which is making it stretch, which is 20 newtons. Now, this is the part that you have to look at the diagram. This is how much the string is stretching. Well, here's the key. The, the spring starts off at what? 0.5, right? And it stretches to 1. 
how much the string stre stretches is this difference. So the difference is going to be 1 minus 0 0.5, which would be 0 0.5. So 20 divided by 0 0.5 is equal to 40 newtons per meter. Now, the mistake is some people aren't going to notice it starts off at 0 0.5, and they're going to say, oh, the spring is stretched 1 meter, and they say 20 divided by 1 is 20. Is that one of the wrong choices? At the most common mistakes that anyone is going to do is going to be a wrong choice. And that's why you need to, ahead of time, when you go over the review sheet, you say, oh, here's a little trick here. Here's a little trick here. I have to make sure that I don't fall for those little tricks and make those little common mistakes that most people make.